By 2015, there will be another billion people crowded onto this planet in places that can ill afford the additional population. The consequences? When we come back. Over the next 15 years, the CIA projects that the world will see a population explosion concentrated in poor urban areas and mass migration of people from less developed regions to the West. ABC's Richard Gisbert has more. It was a random act of symbolism, but a milestone nonetheless. On October 12, 1999, the United Nations declared that this baby born in Sarajevo was the six billionth person on Earth. Now consider this. Before that child turns 16, there will be another billion humans on the planet. By 2015, we will be 7.2 billion people. But the more significant numbers are these. 95% of the population growth, that's 19 out of every 20 additional people, will be in the developing world, in the kinds of countries that often cannot cope as it is. Another 300 million in India alone, soon to become the second country to go over a billion. Just this week, India saw the largest human gathering in history. 70 million people sharing in a Hindu ritual. The swelling population will accelerate the human migration for economic reasons from rural areas to urban. There will be more megacities like Cairo. In 1950, 2 million people lived here. By 2015, it will be 14 million. Everything that's required for urban life has to be doubled, tripled, quadrupled in a very short period of time. And those are the settings in which you can get lots of political turmoil. Those are ripe conditions for more of the kinds of conflicts the world has seen ever since the end of the Cold War. One ethnic group against another. In many countries, in sub-Saharan Africa, the Middle East, and Latin America, half the population is under 20. Too many people who, come 2015, will be looking for too few jobs. That's destabilizing, too. So millions of people will try to come here, the first world, and they will find that in most places, they're not welcome. Which is ironic, because the developed world can use more young blood. Birth rates have declined, the elderly are living longer, and with too few people paying into pension and health care systems and too many drawing from them, something will have to give. If you think the world is a crowded, complicated, and hazardous place now, just wait until this child turns 15. For Nightline, I'm Richard Gisbert in London. Of the, of the population increase in the world, I think literally 30 or 40 percent of it is likely to be in India. India, in general, is going to be looming larger on our screens over the next 15 years. Here's a country that both has the largest middle-class population in the world. Uh, by Indian standards, there, there are more middle-class Indians than there are middle-class Americans, but there are also more impoverished people in India than there are in all of sub-Saharan Africa. So you have cities like Delhi, uh, Mumbai, which used to be called Bombay, Calcutta, and several others will be among the largest cities in the world. Bombay, for example. Three million in 1950, under three million, 30 million in 2015. One city. One city. Take off a few of the others well, while you've got the map Calcutta open in front of you. Calcutta is there. Karachi, Pakistan was only a million people in 1950. It will be 20 million people. All right, why do I care? Why does it matter to me? Some of the issues begin to intersect. Uh, population has a, a very significant impact on the natural resource question, for example. So we take the Middle East uh, and, and look at the water problem. Increased, uh, increased urbanization puts further stress on limited natural resources. And then you get into, start getting into the intersection with economics also, and, and then uh, issues of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of violence and terrorism and it, it all begins to connect. India, China on the rise, Russia on the decline, they all have highly unequal distribution of 
political and economic power within their societies. And if any one of them, or more than one of them, were to break apart or to have high levels of instability, it's very hard to predict in those circumstances what the uh, follow-on effects would be. Where you don't have effective government, where you don't have the rule of law, where you don't have the ability to make the investments in sewers, in public transportation, in schools, in health care facilities, there urbanization could be a very scary phenomenon. And if I could just interrupt us for a moment, we'll have more when we come back.